say that this, that this was questionable when I, when I decided to give it, but I typed it up anyway. I, I spent the better part of the last week working on I've got 20 PowerPoints are okay. Some of them. In those days, I there was no king in Israel. In those days, the tribe of the Danites was seeking inheritance for itself and could not fall into them. So the children of sent five men of their family from their territory, men of valor from Zorah, to spy out the land and search them. They said to them, Go search the land. So they went to the mountains of Ephraim, to the house of Michael, and lodged there. And they, while they were at the house of Michael, they recognized the voice of the young, young Levi. They turned aside and said to him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? What do you have here? He said to them thus, and so Michael did for me, and he, would, he has hired me, and I have become his priest. And they said to him, Please inquire whether ask you got questions you want to know something the best person to ask is god and now let me see if i can get this thing moving here there are a lot, a lot of questions I, i've talked to people that think that the earth is, is flat I, I don't I subscribe to that so that's one is the earth round or flat? How did man originate? Where did man come from? A lot of the questions are unanswerable, you know. Deuteronomy 29 tells us that, that the secret things belong to whom? God, things that they reveal belong to, to man. So there are some things that haven't been revealed. But I believe with all my heart that anything God wants us to know is giving us an answer. That all scripture is, is giving me inspiration of God. God and is profitable for, uh, to, to provide man to all good works. Anything we need to know this. But about people, I've spoken, I think Jared wants because it uh, that my We need the Bible. Yeah. Man needs it. You, you can make a whole sermon out of that page. Why do we need the Bible? Why do we need the Bible? Will most people be saved? You know, some people make all. You can match Especially if you a universalist. But God doesn't want anybody of all 2 Peter 3 9 not willing that any should perish he would have all men come to a knowledge of the truth and uh, but all people won't be saved Matthew 7 13 14 Jesus describes the two different ways that one ends in destruction the other in life everlasting will most people be saved they won't and that's going to be a shock to some folks' nervous system. How, how are men drawn to Christ? Is it through visions, through dreams, et cetera, et cetera? No, it's the gospel, which is God. God's power is saved. Romans 1, 16. And, and Christianity is not true. Oh, <laughs> Born again.
When Jesus said, except you be born of water and of the Spirit, that you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And, and it's not, this is not an option because in John 3, 7, it says you must be, you must be born again. And, and the Bible is involved in our conversion process. That's where the, the, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit has the word that's implanted in our hearts that produces, that's the seed that produces the new, new baby, the new birth. Uh, being, uh, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible to the word of God which lives and abides forever. First Peter 1 7 is a commentary on John 25. There, that's how we learn to become a child of God. Uh, Galatians, I believe, I said, but Jesus didn't pray for diversity in John 17. He prayed for what? Unity. <laughs> unity. And Paul wrote about unity, 1 Corinthians 1 10. And then it, there are the seven pillars of unity that Ephesians spoke of. Are there many ways to heaven? Uh, when I was just a, a freshman in college, we got, got us, some of us guys during the summer got us a tent. We went to Chatham, Alabama, put it up there at the forks of the road right there in Chatham and uh, right behind Mr. Jordan's Gulf Station on the lot there. And an old man stopped by and he said it did no matter which way you go, said so you can get that road and go to Mobile, you get that road and go to Mobile. He said, doesn't matter which way you're going. And uh, he, he had a lot to say. Well, is that true? There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end there is the way of the desert. Jeremiah said, not that Jesus, but I, I, I am the one. Well, anyway, I didn't catch that one. Uh, Isaiah 55. Uh, God said, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and so forth. I believe Acts 4 and 12, people in the world, that there's only one way to heaven. One, one preacher wrote, in the newspaper years ago, I don't, I don't remember was it was a mobile paper on a Baldwin County paper, but he had a little article in there and he was not writing on that school. Well, he said, That's poetry. That's poetry. No, it's not poetry. Neither is there salvation in who? Any other. Any other. Well, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. David, you have a thumb drive. Speaking of it, it's your next question. Poor enough, a lot of people really read a phenomenon. Uh, I think it started back then. And now most of all these other denomination preachers have taken that up. But there's so many things wrong with that. But Jesus said, you can call him, not everyone that said, But who is it that will enter the kingdom, Sam? To do the will of the Father. Not Jesus said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of them, but he that do it, Father. And if believe would do it, then devils will, believe, uh, will be saved, wouldn't it? Because James says the devils believe and tremble. Do we, how do we prove our love for God? Well, first of all, we're to love God with all of our heart. heart. So, so, mine. And Jesus said, if you love me, if you do, do what? 
keep recommending. One version said, uh, says, well, no, no, that, the, the, the verse 21 and are on that same topic. They take that and hit it. So I'm, I'm an old country. I had to look that word grievous up. It's a bird born. I think it means that I desires. Duties ought to be desired. Think about a mother sitting by a fevered child all night long and, 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 and she doesn't get up. All, all night long. And she, she, she's tired. And you say, well, that's her duty. But why did she do it? Because she loved that baby. Loved that baby. Then here's the last one. When should you want to be saved? Well, when you're old enough to believe, when you're old enough to repent, when you're old enough to confess faith in Christ. I'm not going to argue about one of the 400 to 430. I, I think it was the carrot case in Hebrews off. And we just round off numbers. But the age of 80, Moses became the leader in Moses. But he was not allowed the promised land. But he was able to see it. And of course, we're going to discuss that in a moment. Joshua succeeded Moses as leader of the people. Both of them died during the period of the judgment. There's some things implied to that text that every man did what was right in his own eyes. Think about these implications. Number one, that's the case of people today. People, they made up their own rules. They didn't need to make it. To, to study the, the, the book of Judges, You study and there's seven cycles of apostasy in the book of Judges. People will serve God, rebel against God, God will chastise them, they will repent, come back to God, and do it all over again. The implication is it went. It talks about both them up. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 18 down to verse 32, is a description of the Gentile world in Paul's day. And it was a very depraved, corrupt world. And three times in those passages, God made this observation that he gave them up, gave them up, gave them over to a reprobate mind. Their own rules, they pervert the purpose for which they were created. Why were we perfect? And his final appeal to God's people when he wrote the book of Deuteronomy, he didn't use leaving, and this sort of a repeat in Deuteronomy of things previously taught. But he said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And that and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart so forth. Our purpose is to love God and serve God and to glorify Him. I, I believe that's the I long believe that to glorify God is the mission statement of the church. I really I have bring some Social justice, law and order, and for God to be front and center in the lives of the people. It takes leadership. And, and uh, I, I heard, heard it said one time that the church is just the length and leadership, of the length, length and show of its leadership. I think that's true of a nation. I believe the blind what happened to all of them. Those who in the ditch. Fall in the ditch. Now here's some people that made up their own rules, and you can take this for whatever.
Whatever it's worth. But Adam made up his own rules. And he listened to, the, to his wife, and she listened to the devil, and the devil said, well, this is good fruit, pleasant lies, make you wise. And, and so rather than listen to what God said, you're going to die. He made up his own rules. Lot did. He chose a, a well-watered plain, and, and, that went, and he pitched his tent towards Sodom, and he paid a horrible price for that. At a horrible price. And then Moses, uh, he was God's leader. He saw the glory of God in Exodus 3 at the burning bush. He spoke friend that uh, God do it. And so do it the way promised land. I, he was able to see it. From, from what mountain? Nebo. Nebo. I, I, I stood in 1974, or rather 76, I was in from, uh, over there. And, and standing on, on Mount Nebo, there's a panoramic view of all, all the Bible lands. And you over to your right, you can see where they claim the ruins of Jericho. And then, in the far distance, you can see the walls of Jerusalem and all three you can see the Dead Sea. And uh, it's a sort of a panoramic view. Dave Moses was able to see that. Saul made up his own rules when he was told to utterly destroy Abilene. And, and, he, and he did all, all except what? This. All except the, 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 kingdom. the king, Agag, the king, and the best of their flocks, flocks and so forth. But then, then he said, he told Samuel, I've obeyed the voice of the Lord. He said, what's here? here? I hear blatant and sheep. Well, what is all that? Here's a case of road back heaven. Put And really, in Sarah Summa, because I was right on the line of Sarah Land sets of I lived on Cherry Drive many, many years. Better in life, didn't I know that. But he just will not say that's true. There's Nam, and he. He was told to go dip seven times in the River Jordan, and he, he got, but he said he, it didn't praise him. He said, I just thought I go here far, far, and all, all the rivers back here at home, that's good enough. I thought, I thought, there's Saul of Tarsus, Acts 7, 8, 9, we read about him. And Saul, I just, I'm teaching the book of Acts, and Saul, that the conversion of a terrorist, Saul of Tarsus was a mass murderer. He really was. He was a mass murderer. Then Ananias and Sapphira lied. And then Demas, he loved the world. Here's a the the Lord suffer. Confuse that with capital punishment. It's not to be confused. Pick up sticks, you dip the saddle, you there was, if you commit adultery, you won't pay for it. You pay a price for it. And and I believe adultery is a sin against society. We will never have a people are living in adultery. It destroys the home. God said that he hated what? In Malachi 2. Divorce. I hate divorce. It contaminates the soul. But in our day, First Thessalonians 4 says, flee fornication. Flee fornication. Sin, sexual sin. 
And so respect the law of purity. And uh, you see how you take a sermon out of every one of these? Reach for Right, but he can take that slide right up and waste 30 minutes on it. <laughs> Respect others' proper power of the tongue. We're not going to bear false witness. And gossip, and it's such an eternally important thing because in the day of Matthew 12, the day of judgment, we're going to give an account for every idol of word that mentions this Jesus talk. They talked about the rich farmer. Where, Mo, where God appeared to Moses in the burning bush. The burning bush. If you continue in my word, then are you. If you continue in my word, then are you my for
driver's life or license register. And I, was, I was just driving my car and said, uh, uh, he said, do you know how fast you're going to sit? I was doing 105. I said, don't you know what the speed limit is? He said, but you see, I've got, you've got, that's your truth. This is my truth. You think that'd work? It won't work. Work is not reality. It's not reality. It's 200,000 miles from the earth to the moon. Somebody says, well, you know, I think it's 400,000 miles from Earth to the moon. But men have a way of measuring that. That's not reality. Truth in math is narrow in music. My, my parents tried to get me to learn how to play a piano when I was younger, and they wasted about three years of my time because I wasn't been playing ball, baseball, football, any kind of ball. Uh, but I was living in Tennessee and basketball was big, but, but my game was football. And, uh, but I know the notes. And uh, suppose you're teaching your children the notes of metal music, and they learn them from this teacher, and you move to California and enroll them in another teacher, and they start teaching them the different notes. No, no, that teacher in Alabama was all wrong. You know there's something not right because it doesn't matter if you like country or classical or jazz or, or bluegrass or whatever in music, you all have the same notes. You may use them a different way and make difference with those notes. But they're the same notes in, in music. You could go on and on. Well, there's just one way to God, and Jesus is that way. I think Titus 2 and 11 is about the incarnation. You don't have to believe me. But I believe it. The, 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 the grace of God that brings salvation has what? Appeared unto all men. I think that's the incarnate Jesus. Because of verse 12 through 14. Content. Because it talks about looking for Jesus. There's just one way, and that's but through Christ. And salvation is found in Christ. So, listen, 2 Timothy uh, chapter verse 10 says, uh, I, I endure. for the elect's sake that they may obtain the salvation, salvation which is in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Where's salvation found, David? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Christ. All right, let's look. I put Romans 6 in parentheses because I want to put it to the side temporarily. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord. Lord. Heavenly places in the heavens. Where? In Christ. And then, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 17, he is a what? New creature in Christ, you see. In Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ. So salvation is found in Christ. I mean, that's the truth. But the question is, how do I get into Christ? Now you go to Romans 6, verse 1 to 6, and we learned that though you're not so many of us as we're. Baptized in Christ and put on Christ. And, and, and uh, sometime maybe this fall, I want to teach you a lesson. What do you understand about baptism? Unless I've already taught it. It may be the case. You see, we use Romans 6 1 through 6 to teach the necessity of baptism. That when we're baptized, we're baptized in Christ. In his death, that is, the benefits of his death, shed his blood in his death, and that's what. But that's not why Paul wrote it. Because these people had already been baptized. And he wrote it to them, trying to show them what, how they were to live because they had been baptized. And that'd be one that I try to make But when salvation is found only in Jesus Christ. So, so. That's a rather short lesson. Emotional one.
This is Hosea 8 12. Someone turn over and read it. And I've heard preachers say Hosea, uh, Dr. Rex Turner, well, I was in one of his problems classes, and somebody said, Oh, Brother Turner. <laughs> he said, Son is Hosea. And whether Turner was right or not, that's the way I pronounced it. 8 12. Anybody have it? Were I to write for him my laws by the ten thousands, they would be regarded as a strange thing. All right. The Bible. Man's need for divine revelation is our need for guidance. That's the reason we need divine revelation. The way of man is not in itself. John, Jeremiah 10. Eternal happiness. Actually, happiness in this life as well, but it depends upon our use of the Bible. Jesus said, Man shall not live, well, that's now and hereafter, by what? Bread alone, but how? By every word, not some of the words, but by every word that proceeds where? Out of the mouth of God. And to, be, to really be happy, the, the psalmist begins the book of Psalms on a, on a happy, positive note. Blessed is the man that walks not in the what? Counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in what? The law of the Lord. A happy man, and then he says, in his law does he meditate day and night. So we meditate on it. It's our, it's, it's, it's our food, 1 Peter 2.12. We'll talk about that in a moment. In this passage from the book of Hosea, there are three things about the Bible. And let's look at them. Number one, it claims to be the Word of God. He said, I have written. I have written. It claims to be the inerrant Word of God. Jesus said that, that one jot or one devil is not going to be taken away, destroyed until his word be fulfilled. Well, a jot and tittle are small, just small pieces or parts of Hebrew letters. And all scripture is given by inspiration because of 2 3, 16, 17, we learned that. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. It claims to be the Word of God. And, and, and God through the prophet said, I have written, I have written. Now, some, the, there's expressions like these about especially in the Old Testament. And if I remember reading a lesson by the late B.C. Good Pastor on inspiration, I believe in that time he said that expression is such such as the Lord, thus saith the Lord, or the Lord said in the light, are found some 2,500 times in the prophets. I, I think we would be, but, but be, be uh, in the clear, so to speak, by saying it appeared hundreds of times. Hundreds. That's internal claim for inspiration, internally. And that's verbal inspiration. Uh, so, Stephen, would you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and just read verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 because this is about verbal inspiration. I know that we preachers use 1 Corinthians 2 often to talk about heaven where, where Paul said, I have not seen or ear heard, neither is it in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. <laughs> If you use it to apply to heaven, you're using it in an accommodative sense because these passages have to do with the inspiration of the Scriptures. Of 12 now, Stephen. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God. All right. We receive the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. This is what Paul is writing. He's an inspired man. He said that we might know what? No things that have been given to us by God. That God has given us. That we, 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 he, that's, that is verbal inspiration. That is verbal inspiration. Well, who is it that says that it's 
not the Bible. Well, the old devil does this. Yea, hath God said, you remember what he said to Eve? Yeah, you know, God said this to you, but this is what I'm telling you. That they attacked on God's word goes to Genesis. You know, I, I don't like the people just to take my word for anything. I, I, you, you know, as one old fellow said, go home and dig it out for yourself. <laughs> but that's kind of a crude way to put it. But I believe many of the problems that we face today are all in the book of Genesis. Just about every one of them. We're, we're having problems, and, and we might talk about it a little bit later. And I want us to hope that we can talk about it. But I'm working on a sermon on the biblical worldview. Right? It, it's, it's got a long way to go yet, but we've got to have a biblical worldview. And uh, the devil says it's not the Bible. People still it's not the Word of God. The worldly wise, uh, there are those that profess them to say be wise, but Paul said they're fools. And the preaching of the cross is to them they perish what? Foolishness. It's foolishness. That's 1 Corinthians 1, uh, verse 17 down to about verse 25. So it claims to be the Word of God. Now there are the contents of the Bible. They said, I speak to you great things in my law. Well, there, there, these are possible. There, there's this unaccountable unity. And there's no other way to account a book of unity other, other than saying God. There are, it's 66 books, 40 writers, but one thing. Uh, not long ago, I met with some of our men one, one night, and I was going to start a class every week, but I, I just, we, we got to get back. But I taught them a lesson on uh, the sea promise, and I had a string about yay long, and it was red. And I think where the screen came from was out of my, a pair of my pajamas. <laughs> you know, straight around your waist. And I pulled it out. And so I laid that string out on a line. And I said, this is what we're going to talk about tonight. I said, throughout all the Bible, there's a, there's a red cord, a red theme that runs all from the beginning to end. And I said, we're going to study about it. Now we're studying about the seed promise. And all the passages that are about it in the Bible, Old Testament as well as New Testament. Uh, so it, it's one thing. There's the unit, it's the unity of revelation. The old it's said that the Old Testament is the New Testament was concealed, the New Testament's the Old Testament revealed. I believe that. There's its plan of salvation. Uh, that, that we're not that we are to, to neglect that salvation. There's simplicity found in Christ. It's, it's so simple. Paul talked about the simplicity of the gospel. It's the preaching of the gospel that saves 1 Corinthians 1 21. He said that he did not come to, to preach foolishness. It's not the preaching of foolishness that saves. It's, it's the, it's the uh, foolishness. Well, I've been uh, what's the passage? It leads God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Yes, through the foolish. Yeah, the people think that what you're preaching is foolish. Foolish. And then that's the worldwide influence of the Bible. And, and, and the gospel has been carried all the world. Colossians 1 23. And it's followed all, all, all the world. It's not a Western religion, it's not for white people only. It's not for black people only. It's for all people only. <laughs> it's for every man. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes. Romans 1 16. And it went to the Jews first, then it went to the Gentile one. There's the indestructibility. Jesus said, that Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will what? Not pass. The word of God abides forever, 1 Peter 2, 24 and 22. It was on the news about two weeks ago up in Tennessee, and it showed a scene just then briefly of a, of a trailer loaded down with Bibles, and they were burning those Bibles. 
But lots of efforts to destroy the Bible in Korea. Uh, William Tyndall died to give the Bible into the hands of they to destroy, destroy the Bible. Thomas Paine wrote the age, he thought the age of reason was going to replace the Bible, but the Bible replaced the age of reason. How many of you have ever read the age of reason? I've never even seen a copy of it. And, and so men have made all of these claims, but the Bible continues to live. And some have, back years ago, at 175, uh, was it BC, I believe, that they have collected copies of Scripture and had them burned in an effort to eradicate the influence of, the human, of it on the human race. But the Bible continues to live. Hitler tried to destroy the Bible, but it continues to live. So it those people that have opposed it have been long gone, and, and it continues to live. And uh, I believe where Thomas Paine had his printed his Age of Reason, I think this is the correct story. Some of you have heard this before. The Bible Society bought that building and used it as a center for the distribution of God. Isn't that correct? I think so. It's indestructible. Now here's how some people treat the Bible. They count it as strange. Uh, but, but see, we need to get to know it. That's why the Bible says we're to handle it correctly. And when it says study, it should be approved. That's not a command. That's a... Uh, to study the Bible, that's that's a little bit out of the context of the passage. Uh, I couldn't many years they used it that way. It still sounds good in the sermon, but just not exactly what it means when it says study to show yourself approved. Give diligence. I believe the American Standard Version reads, give diligence. Be diligent. When I say, well, you need to study to be a better, a better athlete. Study to do that. I mean, you need to work on it. So work on this, being a good workman, rightly dividing, handling the right, the word of truth, using it correctly. We need to learn to believe it. We need to believe it. Obey it. We're not to add to it or to take from it. He says in the Bible, don't add to the Bible. Well, that's strange. That's how you treat the Bible strange. Revelation 22, 18, 19. It's strange that men reject the one book designed for their welfare now and eternity. So may we love it, live by it, and die by its promises. Number seven, four great blunders. Four great blunders. You say this is a blunder of a sermon. Maybe so, let's see. And this is about the rich farmer, Luke 12. You know the story well. Pull down his barn, don't be old brave. For many years, and God, the Lord said, "You're a fool. You're going to die. He's going. The good's going to be then. It's not going to be long until all are going to be on the other side of the last break of the And I, I'm on my eighty first time of son, so every rotation, I hope to finish this one and start another one. But you see, you don't, you don't ever know that. David said it, it, that there's just a step between us and death. That's First Samuel 23, and it's appointed to a man who wants to die. And Louis and I were talking last night, and I said, you know, Louis, there's been so much tragedy recently. So many people have died that we know. And I've lost friends. I've lost... Uh, there's a woman I, that my trainer's wife, she died with cancer, 42 years old. Every, every funeral, I think, maybe tomorrow or, or Saturday morning. And uh, it's just, but you see, we don't have a short time on this earth. If you were to live to be the oldest person to ever live, if you were to live to be as old as Methuselah, <laughs> not 69 years, that's not long compared to eternity, is it? Not long. But the man in our text made some four mistakes, he, four blunders. I call them blunders. And let's see what they are. While thinking of the gifts, that is his goods, he forgot the giver. He failed to look up. He talked about my fruits, my barns, my goods, my soul, my, 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 my. Mm -hmm. And he forgot the giver. The gifts without the giver are bare. 
it's, we're talking about Moses in Deuteronomy 18 that, that all that God gives us the power to get away. That God gives us the ability. And, and, and all of us have different ability. I'm, I'm amazed that people, for example, that have the ability as a musician. And, and I, I respect them because they work to make something good out of it. But you see, a lot of it is the beauty of the tree. Everything that we have in life comes from God. And the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of our David said. God owns all and He gifts. Every good gift and every perfect gift come down from above. There there are good gifts that are good that are not perfect gifts. Our freedom is a good gift, but I tell you it's not perfect. It, they weren't until I became a member of the family and they were perfect. Uh, but there are some gifts that are perfect that God has given us. And there's the perfect gift of His Son. There's the perfect law of liberty and so forth and so on. It is a mistake when a person leaves God out of their planning. Eric, we turn it over to the fourth chapter of James. And let's look at uh, the mistake this man made. But not only did he make that mistake, others today are making the same mistake. It's the very same mistake. Okay, well. We're going to eat it twice on this case. You want to What do you want, James? What, 4 and 13. 4 and 13. Okay. So. To 15. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and pay and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life for you or a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes? Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord will, if the Lord will, we will live and do this. All right. We need to take God into account in planning our lives. But in thinking about what he had, we forgot about where he came from. What's the story about the, the uh, fellow that the pigs eating off the acorns but never looking up to see where they come from? Here's another one longer. Think, he thought thinking of himself, he forgot his neighbor. You know, God had some neighbors in need, just like you and I have today. But he was laying up for himself. I believe, I don't believe there's but one sin and his selfishness. I, I've challenged people to tell me a sin that doesn't find its root in selfishness. I don't think there is one. I think it's the root of all sin. When Paul was writing the Philippian letter, he said, each county, each of you looking not only on his own things. It's not wrong to look at your own things, but don't look at your own things only, but also on the things of others. And then when he was needing to send somebody to the church there, he said, I'm going to send Timothy. He said, I have no man who will naturally care for your state for all seek their own and, and not the things which are of Christ. They were selfish. Someone said that hell is selfishness on, on fire. Well, many live with themselves. Uh, they're, they're, the, Paul talking about the latter, the last days that, that was his neighbor. They're, they're neighbor. The, the man that was the Samaritan that stopped him and left for half dead. I don't know how dead when you're half dead. This is half dead. I think is a problem in our nation today and it, and it, and it spills over in the, into the life throughout the nation. I think sometimes it can be a problem in the church. Uh, just thinking about self, just thinking about self, thinking about and forget about other people. A church that is turned inward, totally inward, has forgotten mission. 
We should never just turn inward. We should think about those that are outside the walls of the building. Think about the people in the community. Think about the world. And uh, say, if I'm thinking about his body, he forgot about his soul. Physical, but he, he made no provisions for the spiritual. And we have houses and cars and clothes and money and land and make it. we have to take vacations. We have phones and computers and bank accounts and sports. Put all kinds of time and sports events. And, but we forget we have a soul to save. Jesus said, what is your, what have you profited? If you gain all these things, lose your soul. Because our soul is eternal. Eternal. We pamper the body and neglect the soul. Do not neglect so great a salvation. And here's the last one. If people have so much fear in their heart right now. Fear of what's going to happen in the future. As a matter of fact, yesterday when Ray was teaching the class in this room, that was somewhat expressed by, by several people in here. They said, well, what's going to happen? Well, what are we going to do? So... When the foundation's just shaking under your feet, when the world's falling apart, what are you going to do? Number one, trust the Lord. Read it. Somebody read it. Read it. Read it. There shall come forth a rod from the of Jesse. Oh, that's Isaiah, sorry. Although Isaiah, not Psalms. Psalms 11, 1. If we trust the Lord. In the Lord, I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? So trust in the Lord. See, that's what that's how we keep losing hope. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Heart. With all your heart. Not only we're to, to love God with all our heart, we're to trust God with all of our heart. And you can't love God with all your heart unless you start with all your heart. Can Job's trust kept him through the crisis of in his birthday. His health, his wife told him, Won't you just curse God and die? Some think he, she was suggesting, Won't you just commit suicide? But Job said, The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sin not to charge God foolishly. I think I've got that should be Job 1, 20 and 21, 7, 21, 22. Y'all figure that out. When we feel defeated, like they are defeated, we need to trust God. Uh, to trust God to lead on our own understanding. Uh, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is, Jeremiah 17, 7. And Isaiah 26, now in perfect peace, a lot of people have no peace. We can have perfect peace if we put our trust in God. That's what the latter part of the verse says. So trust God. Go to the house of the Lord. The reverse forward, please, please. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. I don't believe that the church building in day, we're the temple, people of the temple. But we're God's house. And we need to gather with the house of the Lord. Maybe that's a better way to state that. But why do we go to worship? Why do we gather to gather with the house of God? Because God's in attendance. Because we become like what do we worship. Do you remember the story about the great stone face? And uh, the guy that was... I can't remember all the stories. Uh, I can't even remember who wrote it now. Nathaniel Hawthorne. Nathaniel Hawthorne, yeah, about the great stone. Tell about it, David. There was a uh, belief in this community that there was this precipice, this cliff in the distance that looked like a face. Mm -hmm. And there was this uh, understanding that there would be one that would come to that community whose face recognized or resembled that face and one young man thought, imagined the qualities that he saw in that face and 
and he looked for people who resembled that those qualities, but never did see it. Till one day, someone looked at him and said, "There's the one. There's the one who resembles the greatest." I'm focusing so much. He, he he took on the resemblance of stone. We become like what we worship. If you uh, uh, some of these uh, singers, uh, they made a goddess out of uh, what's that woman's name? The, the uh, star of the tolls. What's her name? Uh, Swift. 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 I, I, I'm not a Swifty. <laughs> uh, I'm not a Swifty. But they made a goddess out of the woman, and and, and uh, so many of them are so vulgar. But our children, our, our, our children adore them, especially young girls who will be just like they see a, a Miley Cyrus, a, and and the pictures I see on she she is a, she is just vulgar. That's all I'm gonna say, just vulgar and uh, trash. And uh, so we become like, and 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 we need to go to the house of the Lord because we need fellowship with other believers. I, I, I would encourage you to read from Ecclesiastes 4 about two are better than one because if you get cold, two can help warm each other up. If you get uh, assaulted, you can help the other one, and so forth and so on. You, you, have, you have fellowship. We need other believers. And then we remember God is on His throne, though, if we read that verse 4 or 2, right? That God is only strong. He's still in complete control. His power is not diminished. Nothing happens without his permission. He knows what's going on. He knows everything that's going on. Well, so why doesn't he stop it? And, and I want us to study one day about God's will because there is God's permissive will. There is God's, uh, oh, I can't think of all the points that I want to tell you right now. God allows certain things to happen, but He does not approve of it. He, he, for, for, for example, he, because if God if God stops certain things, He would have to set aside certain laws and take away man's volitional powers to make decisions. The reason we hurt is because and have problems because of somebody's decisions that have been made somewhere. Well, nothing happens without his permission, but when we feel like running away, the best, best thing to do is to run to God. Never forget, never forget God sees what is happening. He's on his throne. And, and God sees our struggles every day. He's the eyes of the Lord in every place. Thou God sees me. Yeah. Understand that God will give over sinners. He said, if they give him, they, he will give them over. Yeah. I don't know why we don't believe that he will give the nations over. God stopping it. God will give them over. Yes. And a lot of the evil that takes place when we go. I believe you're right. I, I don't believe you're right. I know you're right. I know you're right. Again, God sees what is happening. Nobody, you know the, the spiritual song, nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows but Jesus. I thought about this, but he can have, not with the hairs on your head. He can do and does know, he, he can and does know all about us. If he can do something that, like that, not a hair on your head, he knows everything else about you. And read something about the Lord has no mind. The Lord tests the righteous. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire, and brimstone, and a burning wind shall be the portion. The Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. Our trials may be a way that we're perfected. 
Uh, the question was asked in Judges 6, 13, if the Lord be for us, why is all this befallen us? We should not doubt God's wisdom in bringing forms. I, I, I use Matthew 14, Jesus walking on the water as an illustration there. And they thought they saw a ghost. It was not real. So Trump, some things are not real. I've uh, uh, been, been alone at night. He's the only one in the house. Eric, mm -hmm. only one in the house, Eric. And you hear something creaking. And uh, you have never heard it before. The reason you haven't heard before, you've never been alone before. And, and you wonder, what is it? And then you begin, if you're not careful, you'll conjure up in your mind all sorts of things that are not real. Some problems are real. You ask the person who just lost a loved one, is that, is that a, real or unreal? It's real. They've lost their home in a fire. They've lost their, they've lost uh, all their savings in some foolish investment. And then there are things that are caused by other people, head-on collision. Someone's drunk, drunk somebody. That, 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 that several people suffer because of some stupid decision somebody made. And then there are those of our own that we suffer because we make some wrong choices. So the benefits, well, James 1, 20, or James 1 and 2 says that they have a way of perfecting our faith. It is, and then the psalmist said, it's good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn your statutes. And then we become, we are comforted, 2 Corinthians 1, and the trials that we have, God comforts us and we in turn can comfort others and so forth. Never forget the retribution comes to the wicked. Ray, Ray, read verse 5. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence his soul hate. So we wonder sometimes, why is it that it seems as though bad people get ahead more than good people? That's not necessarily always the case. So, uh, but sometimes it seems that way. And uh, Psalms 37, verse 1 and 2, uh, tell us. Al, if you don't mind, turn over to Psalms 37 and read verse 1 and 2. You got one of those big print Bibles. I believe I got one just like that one of the ladies here gave me the other day. <laughs> Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and with their green herd. Uh, Payday's coming someday, okay? Read verse 9 there, Al. And then nine. verse 13, read verse 9. This is what happens to the wicked. For well, evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. Wait on the Lord, you're going to be blessed in the end. Now verse 13. Verse 13 says, The Lord laughs at him that his day is coming. The Lord laughs at him. Remember, God loves those who do right. Verse 7. Ray, have you got that verse? Yeah. Did you? The Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His count. All the 20, that's my favorite one. Not all of that, but I, I think it's. Please ask these two, verse 3. David, can you turn over there? And. Uh, Somebody be turning to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. We're going to look at life under the sun. Some people find life boring. They just find it boring. It was uh, Thoreau, the poet, who said that men lead lives of quiet desperation. You see, the world's not always wonderful and good. Sometimes people refer to the world as a what? A rat race. Mm -hmm. Rat race. And uh, you put the rat in a cage and just race it and get down through the maze down to where the cheese is. The maze. And getting the prize at the end of the race seems unlikely, if not impossible. I remember seeing the bumper sticker that the one with the most toys wins. You better listen to Solomon if, you, if that's your philosophy. Uh, someone read now. Life 
No, no, verse 3. Uh, who has that? David? While guiding my heart with wisdom and how to lay hold on folly till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. So that Solomon was trying to find what a man should do on all the days of his life. And here's what he learned. That we're in chapter 1 now, verse 3. Life under the sun is running in circles. What <laughs> verse 4. Read right, right, verse 4 now. One generation passed away, and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. All right, one generation follows another one. Here's a generation that's born, and there's another generation that dies. And then there's another generation that's born, another generation that dies. And the one that's at the funeral today may be the one whose funeral is attended tomorrow. We just don't ever know because that's the cycle of life. One generation follows another. Now verse 5. Well, the sun also arises, and the sun coming down, and half to his place was where he arose. I know everybody's looking at the eclipse this week. I didn't see it. The winds and how they're blowing, you know. But the wind is continually moving and swirling. And then there are the cycles of the rivers. That's in uh, what verse? Seven. Seven. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place from which the rivers come. Till the sun, sun that or that life is just it, every day is just a life. Eat your breakfast, get dress, television, read the paper. Go to bed, rest it, you get up, go back to work, get tired again. It's just a cycle, a cycle, a cycle. And, uh, and the fact is, you read verse 9, you know, we're never going to be satisfied with life under the sun. The thing that has been, it is that which it shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. Nothing. Okay. Let's look at verse 14, the thing that is in his life. Verse 14. I have seen my own bridge that I've done on this song, and behold. So, I don't know what I just going to tell you. Everything done under the sun it is vanity and it's vanity of the spirit. It's just awareness in trying to find what a man should do all the days of his life. In my heart, how to gratify my flesh with wine, while guiding my heart with wisdom, and how to lay hold on folly, till I see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the things in their lives. So he tried pleasure, didn't he? Doesn't it, doesn't it say in verse 3, he tried pleasure? Okay. Well, is anything wrong with that, of having pleasures in this life? You know, the psalmist in Psalm 1611 talked about joyous pleasures. There are certain joyous pleasures. In but Paul also talked about those that are lovers of it. Uh, that's not where the joy That's not where life is, what life's all about. As David just read. Uh, now, you teach this and you have a pretty but I would throw in be not drunk with wine where is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So we're not to be motivated. We're not to be motivated by intoxicants. We're to be motivated to be filled with the Spirit. He tried building great works. This is in verse 4. He built the temple. He built his heart. And I hate it because it's going by somebody have it, somebody else going to have it wasted. In verse 20, all things he had done under the sun, there was no problem. And in verse 16, under the sun. Now, here's the point of the whole lesson. And two, it is life. And he's an old man. And He's an old man now, and he's looking back, giving advice. I have the peace in heaven, the ways of the heart, the sight of the eyes, 
and know thou that for all these things God is God will bring thee. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. To enjoy life. Chapter 20. And that where man is in conference. And uh, turn to Isaiah chapter 1. And well, that hurts. It, it disappoints you. It saddens you. Well, God was grieved with Judah when, when they were astray. He'd help them and leave them and love them. The truth. So suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And so God was rejected. They rejected God. They did. And the result was two passages. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil. From the full eyes, seek to do evil. Learn to do good. See, say you need to wash yourself. And uh, you can't remove the stain of sin with soap. Read Jeremiah 2 22. That's what the internet. In this 1500 miles square, we have not sand or anything else. That's of the earth eventually fades and corrupts. Uh, defile, everything is the object that is subject to decay and defilement. And now don't ask me why some of this is in bold type and some of it's not. Uh, uh, I'll let you type it, re redo it Okay, everything is. He said it fades not away. Things of nature fade away. The leaves, the leaves are coming out now. They're going to turn green. And then about the middle of August, we make a resolution. You have a resolution. I checked in. It was to check in the motel up in Montgomery the other day. In fact, first thing they ask is, do you have reservations? Complying with what the Lord said that we must do to be saved. And the question is, the answer is, what must I do to be saved? Acts 16, 30. And it's by obeying the gospel. And I have the passages written down there for you. Now's the time to think about your future, your eternity. Today is to die to, to, to be delayed is to be unprepared. So, well, not to boast about what we're going to do tomorrow. Now, number 12, love. Tom Neal was Tom get up the gospel of the world. I want to go this quickly with you. That I, I've got production. And it is all about love. It's all for God. Everything is about love for God. Love in our hearts, our soul, our mind, our strength. Lip service is not love for God. First John 3 18, that we're not loved in indeed, but in, uh, in tongue, but indeed and in truth. Is there is there a good reason for not loving God? Can you think of a reason we ought not to love God? And I want you to challenge you. I'm gonna go over this, but I'm not gonna go in detail. Isaiah 45. Five to seven, verse eighteen and nineteen, about God, and then ask the question again: Is it those people that go long ago have loved you with an everlasting love? Get out there. But no one can love God for you. It's a personal matter. You do not inherit love. You can't buy it. You can't be borrowed. <coughs> and second coming of salvation for loving our Father. The Lord direct your hearts in the love of God and the patient waiting for Christ. It's all about love for one another. We're known by our love. That's what Jesus said in John 13, 34, 35. Some say that it was said of her the Christians. I don't know. This might have been in some of the historians of Christ's time. That it was said of their enemies of the Christians. See how they love one another. But we'll love one another with a pure heart fervent there to love the brotherhood. And it's a benchmark of our maturity. And then I've got some, and 
I've got some out of First John. All of those are about love. Uh, it just seems to me that those passages, if you took them one at a the time, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. If you just took the one, two, three, four, four out of first, out of first piece, that'd make a sermon in itself of about Christian maturity is love. And we're to love the brotherhood. We're to uh, love one another with pure heart fervently. We're to, uh, this is a, uh, one another. That's how, you know, the way that we wanted people to know who we were is we wanted them to know we didn't use instruments and music and that we were baptized the remission of sin. Well, that's good to know that. And I believe this with all of my heart. And I believed it a long time and I hadn't changed my mind. If children know that mother and daddy love each other, children know that their mother and daddy love them. And maybe that's wrong thinking, but it just seems sensible to me. And, and husbands are to love their wives and as Christ loved the church. And wives are taught to love their husbands in Titus chapter 2. And a wife whose husband loves her, uh, whose husband loves her, will never be an abused wife. She will never be abused. She will never suffer a black eye, bruise on her body. Uh, we saw someone who was a reason for it. And there was a reason for it. But I believe it. I, I, I don't think in the 60 plus years, 61 years I've been preaching, ever conducted a marriage without any new Colossians 3 14. Love is the bond of perfectness. It's the love. It's, it's, it's that glue. It's that cement that keeps. And selfish, the Paul Paul. In that book, they have a chapter on selfishness, and they they claim, of course, they're both dead now. Boy, they didn't they do a wonderful work in the Lord back in their day. Wonderful, wonderful work. And uh, but they claim that selfishness is the number one terrible thing. Selfishness. It takes truth to set you free. All do not love the truth. We can absolutely Mark 16, 16 teaches an absolute truth and we can never compromise the truth. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about the potter and the clay. And we're going to have a prayer for our food now. And Samuel been no Samuel, Sam, would you lead us and offer a blessing for our Heavenly Father to you for your word that we have that we study it so that we will know how you have us live. Thankful for Billy as he makes us last. That the Lord.